this side. Purge a little bit of extra, more plastic, um, just to clean it out. Be actually ready that it's ready to print at that point. And then from there, it'll move over to the center of the bed and start to print the bracelet itself. Yeah, so what it'll do, it'll just kind of knock it all itself off and eventually it'll be... Yes, so there's switches on both X, Y, and Z. So when it came up, it hit that Z stop and it zeroed itself right where it needed to be to get everything started. And it makes a nice little tune mark. So then, it, the first thing it did, it created what's called a skirt. Basically, it's an extra ring of plastic that it creates around the part before it starts printing the part, before it starts printing the actual part. And that, and that once again, is really used to um, purge, purge more of the plastic out and make sure the extruder is ready to go, ready to print as soon as it starts and actually wants to print. Hmm. Yeah. Have you ever had any issues where the, um, it had, didn't make it easy? Um, um, yeah, and that mostly was because of the, um, the distance between the nozzle and the bed at the very first layer. So when I set up and level the machine, I basically, I have to use like a feeler gauge to set the distance between the nozzle yeah. and the bed. And then there's screws underneath the bed that allow you to adjust how level it is. And then you can use the Z end, the Z end stop. There's a screw on that that'll allow you to adjust where that stops at. Calibrate. Yeah. So you can calibrate from there. And a lot of the problems, if you have adhesion problems, a lot of it comes down to how that distance between the nozzle and the bed from the, at the first layer and how fast you're moving on the first layer. It's always better to move fairly slow on that very first layer to get the best adhesion, which results in a finished print pretty much every time. If that first layer goes down well, you're pretty much set for the rest of the print. Or you're a bunch of schedule. Yeah, but, but don't leave your house. <laughs> yeah, if you leave your house, you can have some devastating results. Have you ever had any issues with uh, the temperature of the room? Um, um, I have not. I've always, I've had it just like set up in my office essentially. It's just one extra bedroom, but yeah, the room is the same temperature as a house and I've never had any issues with it from that. <laughs> a week later, it's like, yep, there goes the brand. <laughs> so is there anything with this machine that you wish you'd pay a little more for to get another feature that you missed? Um, I mean, there weren't any features that I could get as it's being sold, or as it was sold when I bought it. Yeah. One of the things I'd really want to have is an LCD screen and a little control panel with the SD card so that I can, I don't have to be connected to the computer. I can just have the SD card, plug it in, run the machine entirely from the LCD screen with the switch and just run everything from there without any, without a computer even connected. I think that would make it a lot nicer. Now what is the SD card that you have do? Um, they, they came with the SD card reader so you can take your G-code files, your text files, put them on the SD card, then put them into the printer and from this software, if I would chose SD, then it just says SD print and you can select a file that's on the SD card. Uh -huh. Then once you've done that and it's all started and going, you could unplug the USB and leave it standalone oh, from that point. And this is software that came with the printer? This is software that you can download for free. It's open source software. It didn't come with the printer in any way. I just downloaded it. So um, what was that free uh, modeling software called? Thing? Multiples. 3D S. There's one, two, 3D. There's <coughs> CAD, SCAD, something like Open that. SCAD Open SCAD is the one. Is the one that you can actually, um, you know, you write a program 
Right, like the code. Can you use that to do something like this? Potentially, yeah. If you wanted to write the code to model that, or you could just model it and like sketch up. Or well, like, what would be the easiest way to model something like this? I would think something like one, two, three D. OpenSCAD would work. Um, you just have to know more coding than modeling. And what about that material, the clear plastic? Would that be a polycarbonate printer or something? Uh, you can get clear. I think you can get clear PLA. I don't think that's very common though. You can get like translucent. I think this red color on here is sort of translucent, so you can sort of see through it. Light sort of shines through it. Uh, clear. You probably have to get polycarbon if you want it to be truly clear like what, that. What, what would you guess this would be? That probably is acrylic. Uh, uh, just by the look of it. Like cast acrylic. Hmm. So you had a lot of good ideas for software in your slides. Uh -huh. Would we be able to just maybe get that on the, the Synhack Wiki or some uh, common reference that we could yeah, see all the that ideas was actually, you had? The presentation was just a Google presentation, so I could probably make that open and link it. Cool. Link it somehow. We can probably just link that to the Synhack yeah, cool. website somehow. Yeah. If we had a question in the future. Yeah. You can go back to just feel free to uh, mail a link to the discuss list. Mm -hmm. And if anybody isn't on our uh, email channel, uh, feel free to talk to me or Trevor or whatever. We'll get you guys signed up for that. It's pretty, pretty good uh, resource to keep in touch with us. Also, Synhack is a public resource. So if you want to donate to buy a printer for the space, the community will have a printer that you can all use. You don't have to remember, you don't have to remember what you're saying. So, so. I'm wondering about something like this too. Like this is hard plastic, okay? But this is the, connect, the connectors are a little softer. I'm not sure, like, how if, if it was all stiff. If this was all stiff like that, I don't think it would work quite as well. Just snap together. What do you? Think? I mean, there might be two different. If it is two different plastics, then I mean, you could use different two different plastics. I mean, this this might be better as like a like a more rigid plastic that's not going to bend, but Maybe this one could be like a nylon that would have a little bit more give to it. So when you insert them, they would fit well. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you make a really thin, if you if if you made a really thin piece of paper out of the out of the out of the the, the thing with wood. Yeah. I mean, like a real thin piece of plastic. Yeah. Do you do you think you might be able to like fold it like paper? Yeah, I think you would. It might, I don't know how brittle it is, it might crack when you fold it. Yeah. But you could potentially fold it. I know there's different ways. You could, if you heat up plastic, sometimes you can fold it and it won't crack. And also, on the thing I, on, on, the, on the side of the bracelet, I noticed that it had a tiny dent. It looked like a dent. Right there. Oh, it looked like it got a bump. Actually, by the corner of one of these things, it might have as it was doing this, like, <laughs> it goes in and out. Nice, and yeah, made it vibrate. Yeah, have you had that problem before, or is that? Um, I mean, this fan is just held on by, by one screw, so if it gets uh -huh. loose and shifts around, it can uh -huh. it can bump that piece. Or it's yep. just what well, happened to that screw? screw. Like, oh, no, it just has just by design only one screw at when you got that unit, did it have all those printed parts on it, or did you modify them? No, it came. These printed parts were all as as the machine came, mm -hmm. so it's, it was designed to use the printed parts. You could. So they, were those pieces of, of the machine actually printed out by a? Those 3D were probably printer? printed by a printer that's probably real similar to like the one they want to buy here. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it was probably those parts were made on the machine just like this one. So what machine are you considering buying? Oh, I don't know if I'm going to buy another machine for a while. No, no, not you, but for here. You must said yeah. you're collecting funds for the, for the 3D oh, printer. Oh, the one they want to get here. I yeah. think they want to get the PERSA. Or the PERSA. The Mandel PERSA? Yeah, the, um, the RepRap style printer. It's looks more, it's got a lot of all thread on it, a lot of 3D printed parts. Is it the same size as this one or bigger? Um, I think it's... They have really big ones. Yeah, they are. They are bigger ones and small ones. I think the one they want to get would probably be a similar size to this, maybe a little smaller. Yeah. Is this warm? So, not, I mean, this this plastic cools pretty quickly, so you can just touch it right away. Um, but once it's done, you just sort of have to break it off of the bed. 
some parts come off easy, bigger parts can take some effort, but then you can just clean up some of these extra little pieces that are printed and it's finished. Nice. Wow. <laughs> All right, so I think, let's go ahead and let um, Lily here, she's from a company, Philico. Um, as far as I know, they're from Norton. They're a filament supplier, they've got some stuff there. I'm gonna go ahead and let her sort of explain what she, or what her company can provide, I guess. It's cool that, you know, there's a local company, a real local company from here that's in this industry at least. Do you, do you want the mic or? I don't know. Can sure. you hear me? Yep. Yeah, yeah, but that's being recorded. <laughs> okay, alright. So Doug, thank you for the invite. We actually did hear about it from someone else who saw uh, a note posted on FMU's campus and sent it to us. And we were thinking of going, but weren't sure. And then Doug sent us an email, so we said, okay, we'll attend and uh, see what it's about. So wonderful presentation, thank you. Very informative. I, I've learned something, even though I, you know, I know a lot about 3D printers, uh, and I'm sure everyone else can attest to that. Um, uh, talking about Philico, Philico has been established um, in 2012 to meet the ever-growing demand for high-quality 3D printed filament. Uh, Philico distributes filament that's made by Village Plastics Company. Village Plastics Company has been in business since 2004. It is uh, located in Norton, Ohio. Um, it started as a, a welding rod manufacturer and naturally migrated into 3D printing filament market. Uh, it's been supplying 3D printing filament uh, to many companies um, for uh, quite a few years, probably from the infancy of uh, a personal 3D printing market. Um, Pelico right now carries uh, ABS filament. It's on the website. Um, if you go to www.filico.com, uh, it has uh, ABS filament in different colors. They are on the table. Um, also, Filico carries a new type of filament um, manufactured from uh, high-impact polystyrene. Um, Doug has mentioned us. Um, High impact polystyrene can be used as a replacement to ABS. Um, it is uh, S top. Um, the type of um, hips that um, that we use, um, like I said, it's as durable as um, ABS. There are some parts that are printed here. Um, they are made out of uh, hips, um, and they are, um, you know, they're as good. Uh, there's actually a cap for the can that's made of hips. Uh, there's a reel of hips. Uh, in about two to three weeks, um, maybe even a little sooner, uh, Philico will have PLA filament. It has been shipped to the warehouse and it will be uh, sold again online. So why did we start carrying hips? Uh, Doug has mentioned that there has been a need for support material. And as the 3D printing industry is moving to more and more uh, printers that have two extruders, uh, like professional printers, uh, people will be moving into printing parts that have overhangs, and that has been a challenge, printing parts with overhangs. How do you support them? And in the past, you had to use the same material. You had to cut it off. You had to sand it. And um, the introduction of hips uh, will alleviate that need for um, using the same type of uh, material like you know ABS uh, support and not having to cut it off. Uh, hips breaks off uh, from ABS very easily. In addition, uh, a customer of ours has discovered another uh, great uh, way to um, not to get rid of hips, but technically to dissolve hips. Uh, he put it in um, this solution made out of orange peels. It's a cleaner, so it's natural, and it's uh, called, I believe, limonene? Limonene. Limonene. Um, I can't even pronounce that. 
So he was able to, to print the cube, uh, which is a very intricate um, part. And if you want to print that cube, it has a lot of in internal cavities that a traditional support material, uh, you would not be able to, uh, to peel away, uh, break away, file away, because it's inside. So what he did, um, he used hip support, uh, and he was able to dissolve it in this um, limonene. Um, again, I'm probably not pronouncing it correctly. And then um, posted on his blog. Uh, the, his blog post got picked up by m many different uh, other online um, publications, including Make Magazine. If you and if you're here, I'm sure you've heard of it. So that was very exciting to have uh, our film that we developed um, to be featured on uh, on the front page of uh, Make uh, Magazine uh, uh, site. So we were you know happy to see that. Since that time, we've had a variety of different companies order it. I mean, we can um, say that NASA has ordered it, um, which was very exciting. There were universities that, that have ordered it. Uh, we have had uh, a lot of inquiries from abroad. Uh, we've sent samples to Germany. We're sending samples to UK. So it's been a fun development, I think, in 3D printing industry to have this support material uh, to be able to use it as a peel-away support as well as uh, a dissolvable support. Again, there's a great need in the personal printing market for support material. With more and more printers that have um, two extruders, you know, HIPS is one, and we know that Village Plastics, who is our supplier, is working feverishly on developing a water-soluble filament. Uh, right now, Philico has um, exclusive rights to uh, some of those materials. Uh, we do have a picture posted, uh, water-soluble uh, filament coming soon. We're hoping to have it within the next few months for the final stages of testing. So again, as it happens, uh, you know, we'll bring it to the 3D printing market. And uh, we'll share it with you know enthusiasts like uh, Doug and everyone else that's here uh, to be able to uh, print parts with overhangs, dissolve it in just simple jar of water, uh, and you know enjoy your creation. Uh, we brought some little parts that are made of um, ABS. Uh, we have some um, you know again new materials that are coming. There is um, flexible PLA. Uh, it is available in Germany. Um, there's some testing being done here locally.